Alexa, what's on the calendar today? Today, there is one event remaining. At 6 a.m. there's record anthropology class opening video. So, before we get started today, uh, you should probably know like two things about me. Number one, I hate being on camera. I just freak out looking into this lens. I don't normally talk like this. Um, I also don't usually like lay down on a table. Two, I love teaching anthropology. Um, That'll explain why I'm laying on a table. Anthropology is a science of human beings. It's also the art of being human. And pursuing the art of being human and helping others pursue it, that's what I love to do. But it's never been easy. My life's journey looks something like this. Each major new endeavor in life is marked by a fork in the road. Beyond this is a mountain, the mountains of fear. And before each mountain is a river, the rivers of doubt. And just before the doubt and the fear is a smooth green path leading somewhere else. When I first started college, I had a hunger to travel the world, meet new people, and learn from them. But I could hear the rivers of doubt saying, you've never traveled, you're an introvert, you're not good at meeting people. I thought maybe I should just go to business school and make money. But my love was greater than my fear, and I majored in anthropology. I went on to graduate school. I had to rewrite my first paper seven times, after the sixth time my professor handed that paper back to me, the rivers of doubt were screaming. You can't write. You can't write. I thought, maybe I should just take the easy road. But my love was greater than my doubt, and I made it through my classes. Then it was time to do field work. I would have to travel halfway around the world to a remote village with no electricity or running water, and live with people I'd never met. Three weeks in, I was breaking down. I thought, maybe I should just go home and play it safe. But my love was greater than my fear, and I finished my field work. Then I got my first job. I was a professor now, and I felt the need to be and act like a professor should act. Teach like a professor should teach. I thought, maybe I should just follow the traditional model of success. But my love was greater than my need for success, and I redefined success on my own terms. And now, 12 years later, I face another new thing. Higher ed is changing. The world is changing. The way we communicate, educate, and share is changing. The rivers of doubt are screaming out to me, you've never been on camera, you've never made videos like this. And the mountain of fear trembles, saying, you know, if you fail, everybody will see it. The green path leads to the same old routine. I can rest on my laurels, coast through the rest of my life. But my love is greater than my doubt and greater than my fear. But just like every mountain I've faced before, there's bound to be a rough start. What you're about to see is a rough start. Morning class. It's a big day today, our first day of anthropology class. I'm on rollerblades just to get my mind off the fact that I'm looking into a camera, which just feels really weird to me and I'm scared of it. So anthropology is a study of all humans in all times and all places. And there's a hill up ahead. It's about 1,200, it's about 1,200 feet long. And so we're going to pretend like it's a 12,000 year timeline. So here was the plan. Anthropology is the study of all humans in all times in all places. So I wanted to give you a sense of the grand sweep of human history and where we are today. So the plan was to speed down this hill on rollerblades, getting faster and faster to represent the speed of change, then turning around the corner at the bottom of the hill to show the tremendous population growth after the Industrial Revolution. So my actual path would look like this. Here's what a slow test run with a drone looked like. What I had not really accounted for was fear. And so we're gonna pretend like it's a 12,000 year timeline. So each foot is going to be, each foot is going to be 10 years. 
That I could not move a decimal point one position at the top of the hill was a bad sign. Something really dramatic happens right about the time that we cross the 12,000 year mark. Somebody starts planting their own food. Once they start doing this, they don't longer have to move around to get their food. They can start to settle down and their settlements start to get bigger. So that by 9,000 years ago, the first cities are appearing. As we speed forward 8,000 years ago, people no longer have to do the same thing. They can all do different things. So they start innovating. 6,000 years ago, we have the first cities. And then after these cities start to grow. Halfway down, the lecture was completely falling apart. You'll notice. But I was determined to try to save it. Right, 2,000 years ago. And as we head into 2,000 as we hit the quarry part of history, the population explodes. Uh, I worked out really hard. We gotta go home. <laughs> Ooh, you tore up your leg pretty bad. Yeah. Oh man. I'm getting dizzy. The things I'm gonna do for this class. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Morning everybody. Welcome to the first day of anthropology <laughs> class. This is Rosemary, my assistant. <sighs> I'm gonna go home and clean up. In retrospect, I think the crash might have been totally appropriate. <laughs> the reason I can't breathe. <sighs> I mean really, what lies around this curve is a totally different way of life. Before the curve, people depended on family and community. This provided them with a sense of meaning and purpose. It's not just technology that's different on the other side of the curve. It's our economy, society, politics, culture, our religion, even the basic questions of life. For the first time along this timeline, there are three questions that very few asked before the turn. And now everybody is asking, who am I? What am I gonna do? Am I going to make it? And with global warming, environmental degradation, global inequality, terrorism, superbugs, and nuclear weapons, we're faced with three sister questions as well. Who are we? What are we going to do? Are we going to make it? These are the questions of anthropology. This is that higher purpose I was talking about earlier. The science of human beings, the art of being human, has never been more important. I do have a beautiful view. I tell you, this hurts like hell. Yep, I gotta go bye bye. I gotta go try again. This is George. I've learned a lot from him. That's what you taught me. When you fall down, you gotta get back up. Remember when you used to go down the stairs? If you're not where you are, if you're not where you want to be, if you don't have what you want, you want to have, if you're not where you think you should be at this particular place, it has nothing to do with the system, but it has everything to do with the fact that you're not making the sacrifice. And you used to get right back up and keep trying? Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. Your pain is going to be a part of your prize, a part of your product. I, I challenge you to push yourself. One time. Yeah, and then you finally did it. Listen to me, you're gonna be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up, oh. if you give in, if you quit. And finally, guys, you gotta wanna succeed as yeah. bad as you wanna breathe. And now you can jump. Oh, now you can jump down the stairs. Yay. All right, we're gonna try this again. The human body is kind of amazing. I crashed just like an hour ago. Here I am again, back on my rollerblades. I love teaching, but I don't really feel like a professor. A collared shirt feels like a costume to me, but I love putting it on because it means I get to go stand in my sacred spot and do what I love to do. That's Brennan, one of my interns. All right, you wanna start recording on that one? We live, we live. Have I told you about how sacred this room is to me? No. <laughs> so when I was, I suppose, your guys' age, I would sit right here and the room used to be this way. And this was actually the first place I sat when I came to K-State. It was my first class ever. 
and I sat here and like this guy went up on stage he had like this you know white hair white beard and he just started like blowing my mind with questions I never asked before and and three years later I was in Papua New Guinea traveling the world and that's how I became an anthropologist <laughs> so like so I kind of see like this spot as like my sacred spot and it's kind of amazing that I get to come back here and teach from here now. So after 20 years of studying anthropology and 12 years of teaching anthropology, I came to the idea that you could actually organize all of anthropology into 10 big ideas. Your, your syllabus is actually organized around these 10 lessons. So I'm just going to play a short clip from the moment that I kind of thought of these 10 big ideas. This is going to be a scene from, uh, from class when, we, when I actually teach from my sacred spot here. Imagine never being bored again. That's what college is really all about. It's not just about getting a job. It's about learning all kinds of stuff so that the world becomes alive. And you might actually purposefully not open your phone <laughs> every time you have a, a moment because you just want to be with the world. That, uh, let's put that as the ultimate <laughs> goal of the class. So you got this syllabus, and the syllabus is a little different. I'm trying to create a journey for you. It's not just a series of topics. There's a real journey. We study all these different people around the world and think, wow, there are nine big ideas that I think can change your life. And I just want to read the syllabus with you. People are different. These differences represent the vast range of human potential and possibility. Our assumptions, beliefs, values, ideas, ideals, even our abilities are largely a product of our culture. We might respond to such differences with hate or ignorance, or we can choose to open up to them and ask questions we have never considered before. When we open up to such questions, we put ourselves in touch with our higher nature. It was questioning, making connections, and trying new things that brought us down from the trees and took us to the moon. It is not easy to see our assumptions. Our most basic assumptions are embedded in the basic elements of our everyday lives our language, our routines and habits, our technologies. We create our tools, and then our tools create us. Most of what we take as reality is a cultural construction, realized through our unseen, unexamined assumptions of what is right, true, or possible. We fail to examine our assumptions not just because they are hard to see, but also because they are safe and comfortable. They allow us to live with a flattering illusion that I am the center of the universe and what matters are my immediate needs and desires. Our failure to move beyond such a view has led to the tragedy of our times, that we are more connected than ever, yet feel and act more disconnected. Memorizing these ideas is easy. Living them takes a lifetime of practice. Fortunately, the heroes of all time have walked before us and they show us the path. They show us that collectively we make the world. Understanding how we make the world, how it could be made or understood differently, is the road toward realizing our full human potential. It is the road to true freedom. So after 12 years of teaching in this class, I had a revelation that you can't just think your way into a new way of living. You have to live your way into a new way of thinking. So each of the 10 lessons is paired with a challenge that will allow you to live your way into this new way of thinking. Talking to strangers, field work of the familiar, trying something new, word weaving, the unthing, get uncomfortable, encounter somebody different from you, find humans that made your stuff, and then find your own inner hero and write your manifesto. We got a whole team that's gonna help you along the way. <laughs> Brennan, Mallory, Rosemary, Carly, Bailey, and Ashley. And we got a whole team of other folks traveling the world. My name is Ben and I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm in Barcelona, Spain. I'm Amy and I'm headed to Samoa. I'm there, look you soon, I'm here in Zambia! Let's go Zambia, let's go! If you're officially enrolled, you've been automatically assigned to one of these TAs. They will be your inspiration and guide throughout the course. Go to Anth 101 to start your own journey. You can follow along with the course, see what your TAs are up to, and even see what your fellow students are posting. And when you're ready, 
Take a challenge. The class is organized into 10 lessons and 10 challenges. There'll be a new video every day at 3 p.m. Here's the lesson plan for each lesson. On day one, an intro video, plus a chapter to be read. The textbook is free at ant101.com slash book. On day two, you'll have a challenge inspiration video. That will get you excited about doing the challenge and help you along the way. Day three and onward for the whole lesson, we'll watch great videos together. One new video, some sort of documentary or movie every day. And on the last day, you post your challenge. If you're officially enrolled, your quizzes and discussions will be due at midnight the next business night. Your challenges will be due the day after the last day of the lesson. See Canvas for the exact due dates. So as for me, I have my own challenge. Staring down my fears, making a video a day for each of the 40 days of class. I'll see you at anth101.com.